That's going to be what's written out there until we do something about that. That's going to be the narrative that we can't beat the Bills. And until we do beat them and we beat them consistently, like none of that's going to change. And we have an opportunity to do that this year. We have an opportunity to do that this Thursday. All right, Peter. So, A, do the Dolphins have a Bills problem? And to a Tungavailo's point, how do they erase the problem tonight? Yeah, the, the Dolphins do have a Bills problem, and it's real, and it, it goes back to many years, obviously five of six, but also four in a row. The last time they beat them was the Ken Dorsey game where Dorsey threw the tablet up in the box, <laughs> and it came so short. Um, Dolphins have some history with the Bills, though. Do you know that from 1970 to 1979, the Dolphins were 20-0 and 0 against the Buffalo Bills? Like, they just dominated that entire era. You said 20-0? 20-0. That was in the 70s. And then Marv Levy comes around, and the Bills kind of dominated the Dolphins. They beat them 3-0 in playoff matches. Um, yet Marino and Kelly were like Tua and, and, and Allen in a way, in that they would go at it twice a year, and they had this amazing matchup. And <coughs> the Dolphins, amazingly, would go into Buffalo. They would hold their own. Like, 11-7 and seven is what Kelly was against, against the Dolphins. It wasn't like it was this deal where it was 14. They have to fix this because never did Dan Marino go up against Jim Kelly and say, yeah, we know it's a problem. We can't get past them. The Dolphins would be there. They would be battling. And this is a different deal. You don't want to go through another generation of Bills and Dolphins fans where the Bills always have the Dolphins number. I look at Tua. You got your money. I look at Tyreek Hill. You got your money. Mm -hmm. I look at this Mike McDaniel. You got all your respect. You got your money. You got the contract. Win this game. Last year, week 18, it was a win, and they had a, had a home playoff game and the whole deal, and they go to Buffalo, and they play in this big game against the Bills, or it's in, in Miami, I'm sorry, and they couldn't get it done. Couldn't get it done. Buffalo found a way. Josh Allen threw for 359 yards, was the best player on earth. They could not beat him. This is a real problem. You can get paid. You can do all these things. You have to beat your division opponents. You have to be able to say, hey, every time we go at it, it's going to be a battle, and we get them sometimes. They got them one time. They got them one time, and a coach threw his tablet, mm -hmm. but they haven't gotten them in a while. And overall, Josh Allen owns the, Dol the Miami Dolphins. That's just what it is. Mm -hmm. They have to fix that tonight. Week two, at home, in that heat, mm -hmm. everything is stacked for the Miami Dolphins to win this game. Find a way. Yeah, Peter, you're, you're right, because they're going to have to, they're gonna have to take advantage while they have that home field advantage you know, against the Bills because especially when you look in the AFC East, if they want to be competitive, they got to take advantage of that. Their next game against the Bills is going to be November 3rd. We know that temperature changes November 3rd up there in Buffalo. But, you know, it, you said something going down the history lane, and it took me back to the playgrounds uh, at Audubon Middle School when I used to have uh, lunch um, wagers, so to speak, sure. um, in, uh, with Paul Smith. I grew up liking the Dolphins because of Tecmo Bowl, only from Tecmo Bowl when they had the Mark brothers, Duper and Clayton and John Offerdahl yeah. and Dan Marino. I remember that era <laughs> very, very well. And we would always come back and I would always end up missing out on lunch because Paul Smith would always beat me. He was an avid, avid Buffalo Bills fan. I don't know why that is. I just needed to share that story because when mm. you said that, it just kind of took me back to that time. That was when Thurman Thomas and Andre Reid and Lofton and Kelly, and I'm just going, can they ever get over it? Now we fast forward to now, there's an opportunity, but now I don't think that they're going to be able to do it because you think about Raheem Mostert, he's out of this game. They need that strong run game to be able to stand up to the Buffalo Bills. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you look at all the other pieces that they have around them. I, I think this is going to be a big time challenge for, for the Miami Dolphins to win. And, to me, the, the Bills have had their numbers, uh, their number for a while now. And um, gosh, good luck. I mean, that's one of those ones. You think the trend continues? Yeah, the trend continues. Yeah, I mean, we, we talked about weather changes. We talked about the play in Buffalo in November. It's a yeah. Different, yeah. different scene, different weather, all of that stuff. But history may say that the Buffalo Bills has the Miami Dolphins number. Mm -hmm. But this isn't history. This is 2024. This mm. is the Miami Dolphins. The Buffalo Bills are not the same team that they've been in the past. <laughs> Starting from the secondary, you, you think of Tredavious White. You think of Micah Hyde, mm -hmm. Jordan, Jordan Poyer. Guess where Jordan is at, guys? Mm. Where? 
He's Miami. in Miami. Miami. Yep. Miami. Yep. Right. So we talk about the dominance that that defense has had over the years over Tua and Tyreek Hill and company. A lot of that had to do with those two safeties that they've been that they had back there. Those two all pro safeties that kept a roof over that speed. And then you think about Josh Allen and he's dealing with new talent around him. He's dealing with I think last last week he threw to seven different targets. And so he doesn't have the Stephon Diggs. He doesn't have the Gabe Davis. And, and to, to the credit of Stephon Diggs, he was somebody that was allowed, that gave the Bills the opportunity to extend drives. It kept Tua off the field. It kept Tyreek off of the field. So with those two components alone, I think that the Miami Dolphins are going to, it's going to be a different future from 2024 mm. on. And you have Jordan Poyer over okay. there at Miami Dolphins. And you know he's in the ear of, okay. uh, of the coach right now. We'll find out tonight, Manta. You make great points. I mean, this is not the same team. This is not the same defense, everything. How much is it obvious that Tua just hates talking about this? <laughs> Tua is such a good guy. He's good with the media. He is already annoyed with this because it's – look, in the Tua time of, with Buffalo, Tua – This is, let's just stick to facts before we get into opinions. Seven games against <laughs> Buffalo, he's lost to him six times. He hasn't lost to any opponent more than three times. In those seven games against Buffalo, he's thrown seven interceptions, the most he has thrown against anybody. Josh Allen is 11-2 and two against Buffalo and his – or against Miami in his career. He has an idiotic 41 touchdowns in those – 13 games in the Tua Allen combined era during that era the Dolphins have losses by 28 points by 30 points mm. by 35 mm. points guys the Miami Dolphins are why Josh Allen is in soda commercials they're <laughs> why he's in potato chip commercials they pay for his beach house I imagine the Dolphins and Dolphins fans hate it. They're tired of it. They hate seeing it. They hate seeing those commercials. They hate his beach house. They hate me talking about it. So do something. Of course you have a Bills problem. You know what? At some point, the Bills had a Patriots problem. Year after year <laughs> after year, Patriots, Patriots, Patriots. That's a good point. And eventually the team changed, and then now they beat the Patriots all the time. Listen to this. If you want to do something about it, tonight you are on a short week in prime time, a week after he was sacked twice, carried the ball nine times, and took a bunch of hits against Arizona. You are playing in your home stadium, which he openly admits he hates. He does not like playing there. So beat them. Short week, prime time, your stadium. If you're sick of it and you're sick of even this topic and you're sick of the show saying he has a problem, we're right. You do have a problem. Do something about it. Your problem specifically is we've seen these celebrities have a minority ownership stake in the Dolphins. And it's J-Lo and it's Serena and it's Gloria Estefan and it's Josh Allen has a stake. <laughs> so revoke it from him. Do it. All right? These are just facts. You know it. I know it. We know it. Do something about it tonight and we will applaud you. Like, ladies and gentlemen, all right? Do it. I always love, though, when the guys, the people that have the minority ownership and they're like, this is this splashy person in the stands and they made it there for Thursday Night Football. Prime Video loves shots like that of the celebrities. But a couple of things that are in the Dolphins' favor at this point is that on a short week, mm -hmm. just a recent trend has been the home team has won very frequently. Another easy trend to lean on is the fact that the Dolphins have started out hot the last couple of seasons. They've been 2-0, 3-0. Mike McDaniel looked great in September. But to Kyle's point of the Dolphins look, making Josh Allen look good and getting him paid in his career, Tua Tungavailoa got his contract this offseason. We are seeing a different mm -hmm. Tua Tungavailoa at the pressers in his conversations that he has with the media. He has a different air about him. Perhaps it is one of confidence. It is the fact that this organization believes in me. I have this newfound respect and support from the team and the coach. And he's starting to feel himself as a professional. Manta, you know Tua very, very well. What, why are we seeing a different Tua? What are you seeing differently from him, both at the podium, but also maybe what could transpire on the field? Well, I see a Tua that's very lax right now. I mm. see a Tua that's very confident in not only his abilities, but very confident in his feelings with his franchise. He knows, based on how he's paid, that he's going to be there for a very long time. And whenever you have that kind of confidence and that reassurance from your team, it allows you just to go out there and play lax. Like we're, mm. We'll get down to different quarterbacks who are in different situations and the impact that it has on their play. But you think about Tua, you think about his leadership, you think about his command of that offense. I, I'm really excited for him going into this game. I'm always rooting for my little brother, and I'm looking forward to, it, to, to, to seeing all the new things that he's going to do. He has new tats now. Uh, he's, he's about 15 pounds yeah. lighter, so he, he's locked in. He's ready to go. So 
I I'm sure that tonight he's going to put on a show. Well, I, I will say this one thing that that with uh, a chain being uh, a chain being questionable most start out. I mean that run game is critical for him to open up that passing game and that's the one thing concern I have about them mm. being able to change the narrative of history. So if they don't have that run game I think we, we're looking at a different outcome. I think I, I think to, to your point though Akbar, I, I, the, the, the Niners the, the Miami Dolphins are like the Niners where it's a system. Right, you can plug and play people and put them wherever you want it, and it's going to be the, it's not going to be the same exact result, but it's going to be the same result if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, yeah, we yeah, saw yeah. that with Jordan Mason on, on Monday night. To Manti's point, one of the former Niners running backs is going to be Jeff Wilson, who's yeah. there. Who every year Jeff Wilson comes in and gets the job done. He's never on your fantasy team. You never draft Jeff Wilson, <laughs> but he might get looked at on today for the Dolphins. Now, I will say this. If you're a Miami Dolphins fan mm -hmm. or if you're a Dolphins player or coach, you would have much rather had this game at 1 o'clock p.m. Definitely. on a Sunday <laughs> instead of a short week, not in 90-degree humid weather, not with the sun beating down on Josh Allen. It's not ideal playing the Bills at night yeah. at home with a little chill in the air as opposed to the daytime. And I'll, I'll, I'll mention one name who's playing in Vegas right now and is not yeah, a part of I this game at all. Christian Wilkins ain't there anymore. Yeah. And that mm -hmm. was the guy who used to get under Josh Definitely. Allen's skin. That was the guy that Josh Allen would dread playing. Openly, they don't like each other. Maybe they do off the field. On the field, they don't. J Christian Wilkins is gone. Let's see how this goes because I think he was a Bills, a, a Bills, a thorn in the Bills' side or something in the Bills, you know what, based on the way he plays um, in the pile. I would say this. Without him on the <laughs> field, uh, I'd be wondering if Josh Allen and the Bills feel like they – they have a little advantage up front in the trenches. Yes, however, to whoever brought up Jordan Poyer, there's so many people at the table in this conversation right now. Uh, Jordan Poyer knows Josh Allen just as well as anybody else who's just in the locker with him, rock, sure. locker room yes, with him the last handful of years. Sometimes it's that brother that you have that knows when you come back from college or you see each other again, they're really able to get you. And they, like Jordan Poyer knows all of the things that make Josh Allen tick. So maybe the Christian Wilkins replacement, maybe not in hatred or nastiness, could be Jordan Poyer chirping at him from the defensive backfield for the Miami Dolphins. This is why we play the game, though.